Hi everyone, my name is Marcin and as always I'm glad you decided to look into my Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to add this interesting dramatic effect into your photo. I'm not sure how I suppose to call it but you can see the final result on your desktops at the moment. It's some kind of gritty effect, uh, maybe a little bit HDR effect with huge details and that was the image I started with, that was the picture I started with and after this whole process this image looks like this and I really think it's quite interesting so I'm sure a lot of you would be interested about this Photoshop tutorial so let's start from the beginning the image I started is some uh, kind of boxer and at first I have to of course duplicate this layer and let's call it black and white and of course as the name says we have to desaturate this layer so click image adjustments and desaturate but of course I don't want to leave it black and white so now I'm going to change blending mode into screen I think this image might be a little bit too bright, but I think it looked much more effective at the moment. I'm going to set opacity around 60%. I think it would be enough. Now, uh, the second step would be changing the colors. I want to change the color. So, go to gradient map. I'm going to change let's try with this at the moment just as a test and change into color and change opacity to maybe 30% I think this color is not really suitable so let's change it a little bit I think more bluish color would be really great here it's dark blue color and in here I think yellow strong nice yellow color would be really great that's it I think um, it works really great on this image now I think this image now I think this image is still too bright I'd like to take uh, down some brightness just a little bit and around the area I'd like to paint with color black to set the light from the right uh, uh, corner, right uh, top corner, down. I'm going to call this um, brush, brush, black brush, set a brush, color black, and of course set the size quite big, and paint around our model. And now just change the opacity down to maybe 40%. So now I usually do a stamp and final correction using plugin at the end. But in this case I'd like to add some uh, details now which gives me opportunity to do some really nice corrections after this. So I'm going to create a stamp now. Alt, Control, Shift and E and Alt, Command, Shift and E if you're using Mac. I'm going to call these details, click right and of course convert to Smart Object. In this case I'm using Topaz details which I highly recommend. Um, of course you can use every kind of plugin, uh, for example Perfect Effect before uh, for free or other free plugins to Photoshop when you can get really nice um, details. I'm using Topaz details. I highly recommend you that free trial for 30 days and if you'd like to buy it, it's only $39 and the price is really worth to get this as it's really great. So if you're using Topaz details, um, it's in filter, then click Topaz, Topaz Labs and Topaz Detail Tree in this case.
And as you see in Topaz details, we have some uh, prepared, uh, some of the prepared uh, details, but I'm going to set my details on my own. Uh, let's go to shadows, and in shadows I don't want to add too much details, so I'm going to skip um, shadows area, actually, and I want to add really nice details in highlight area. So, I start from the down large details boost, bring it up a little bit, I think our highlights are not too strong at the moment, so the difference is not really big. So we can add really a lot large details boost, it's really huge. And this image looks really interesting at the moment for me. You can change the tone uh, if you want. If it's too dark or too bright, of course, you can change the tone. I can add some exposure and later on I will take it down a little bit. Of course, you can add some contrast, but I wonder if I add too much. It won't look really good. Maybe take down some. No, it's enough. And now go to overall. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to post some large details now in general. As well as some medium details, but actually not too much. And as you see, this image looks really detailed now, really dramatic. I already set an exposure and contrast. I wondered maybe contrast is too strong, but actually not because I want corners to be really nice and dark. Go to color and you can set a temperature. If you think this image is too warm, you can take it down a little bit. If you think it's too cold, you can add some temperature into this image. I think I will add some temperature now and later on, um, I will add some nice cold colors. I think, um, I'm not sure about this. I will do color correction a bit later. So if we finished with uh, details, click apply. And then we can start our uh, proper correction. Now uh, I could say this part was preparing image to the um, our proper uh, correction, click OK. And as you see, our um, effect, our details are applied into Photoshop. It's not really strong, but this image looks much more better, a bit warmer, uh, sharpen. Um, so now, I'd like to use Dutch and Burn tool. Create new layer, I'm going to call this Dutch and Burn. As always, click Edit, fill and fill this layer with 50% gray. Um, repeat this in every Photoshop tutorial, change blend mode to overlay, which is going to make this layer invisible. Click Dutch and Berto, then I will start as usual with Dutch tool. I have to zoom it a little bit, and as always, um, Dutch and Berto. Paint the shiny parts of the image. Exposure only at 20%. I don't want to add too much. And range at mid tones. So as I said, paint the shiny parts to add some nice, nice contrast. Sorry for this. It looks like my Photoshop. Isn't my computer isn't strong enough, but I'm happy I got my new laptop now. But I don't think it's really great for Photoshop. Of 
papers a little bit on his face. And some highlights on his hair. Okay, after you finish it, change into burn to the same export at 20%. Set your brush and the same as with touch tool, but now paint all of the parts in shadow. Okay, take a look. See, this uh, I think it looks much much better at the moment after uh, dodging and burning. And now I'd like to add some smoke to give this image some really nice and mysterious effect. I'm just going to add some clouds. So create new layer. I'm going to call this. Clouds. Of course, you can use a smoke brush or some smoke um, texture. I don't have at this moment, and I think uh, clouds works really great. Of course, color black and white, and um, change blend mode to screen. And of course, it doesn't look well. So the thing we have to do, we have to make it a little bit blurry. In this case, I'm using a uh, Gaussian blur. It's not uh, quite strong. And press OK. Of course, it's still too strong, so you have to take. As you can notice, these clouds covered our details a little bit. So maybe even less, because we cannot cover all of the our details. We don't want to lose this beautiful color. And now, once again, I'm going to add some uh, black color, create new layer. I'm going to call this black brush once again. And paint in this area as before. Take it down. Wondered. It's been too much, so I'll do this once again. Okay, and take down opacity a little bit. Okay, I'm going to create this once again, and I'm going to do this one more, but just here on the bottom, and take down opacity once again. Okay, okay after we've done all of this, it's time for some really nice texture, uh, which I already have prepared. Um, this texture I found on DeviantArt originally. It's like colorful, but of course I saturate this image. And the size, in, of course, I forgot to say this um, texture is totally for free. You can use it for whatever you want. Probably you can find link in the description. So I'm just going to move this texture into my image the size is a bit bigger but actually it's totally fine for me 
And now, using free transform, I'm going to change the direction of it. Change uh, blending mode into the screen, just like me. Okay. And now, time to add layer mask, and I have to clean the edges a little bit here, as it doesn't look well, of course. Okay, I think it's still a bit too too strong, so the thing we have to do, we have to change opacity a little bit, maybe down to around 50%. And I think it looks really nice as it's in the same direction as our um, lights. I think, I, I think it's a bit too strong here, but I don't want to remove all of this. I'm going to change opacity of my brush maybe to around 30%. Just double click on this to make it not so strong as above uh, our model and I think now it looks really interesting so the next thing is I think it's a good time for some color correction so I'm going to go to gradient map once again and I think I'll use very soft uh, blue color very very soft for shadows and quite soft creamy color for highlights and let's see how it looks I am going to change blending mode into color okay And as you can see, after all of this layer, we don't have enough contrast on this image. So the thing is best to do now, I think, is use uh, some contrasts or just curves. I prefer curves in this uh, case. Just take it down a little bit um, here with RGB mode on the shadows area and bring it up on the highlights area. And I think that's it. That's how our final result looks like. Let me show you how this image looked before. Actually, I think it looks better than before for me. That was the image I started with, and that's how this image looks like. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think the effect was really nice, mysterious, dramatic, everything I like. So thank you for watching, guys, and see you soon in another Photoshop tutorial.